We're fucking live. All right, here we are back again. Jake here, Far Beyond Driven 1. Although I'm right now in the middle of changing my YouTube handle. Uh, right now, I think it's Iron Beyond Driven. I don't fucking know what I was doing. I didn't realize that I can only change it twice in two weeks. I'm in the middle of trying to find something new. Uh, simply because, yeah, I think in order for the channel to grow a little bit more, I, I think I can't have the same exact name as a Pantera album because anytime you look up Far Beyond Driven, Pantera is gonna pop up. So here we are, we're back in the Ford F1. Classic YouTube uh, conservative right wing talk here, right? With the Ford F-150 talking to the camera, right? That's the meme. All right, all jokes aside, man. Week five, holy fuck, what a shitty week this has been for me as far as, uh, I, I smashed my phone, so you might notice the phone quality on the camera is a hell of a lot better because I smashed it. I was in the gym, put my damn phone on the fucking safety rack. I was benching. I felt my barbell hit the safeties, and I thought, wow, I should probably lower those safeties. You know, I'm smacking the shit out of the barbell. And when I sat up after my warm up set, it was like 225 on the bar, I saw my poor iPhone 8 that has been around for, you know, six years just completely smashed to bits so blessing in disguise i got this fancy new iphone <clears throat> i'm able to come on go ahead stamp neighborhood so i'm able to film a lot more nicer quality videos which i figured would probably just be nicer anyway for my my uh youtube stuff anyways so smash my phone uh also smashed a couple damn prs um this this is gonna be a little different because typically I've been releasing my PR or just posting my releasing. I've been posting my PRs just as they come, but I had a whole SBD day. Um, I had two days before where I did, you know, one bench day, one squat day with deadlifts. Um, and then I just did an SBD full max out day. Some in my garage, some in the gym. So I smashed a 525 pound squat uh, I, I, I don't know if it was depth or not, but it felt pretty damn good as far as uh, everything mechanically went. I know I hit 495, perfect depth. It felt great. It felt very easy. Uh, 525, a little more difficult, but it definitely uh, boosts my confidence going, going forward um, that I can hit over five plates, that I can have that much weight on my back, and I don't have to be fucking scared. Ain't nothing to be scared of right just fucking send it just put it on your back and don't fucking die you pussy that's basically my mentality when it comes to squats and squats are just so damn scary to me because it's just crazy thinking of having 500 pounds on loaded on your back let alone these guys who squat a thousand like i can't what the fuck man that shit's just insane but i don't care how many drugs you're on or what you weigh having a thousand pounds on your back having 700 800 900 that's all fucking insane i think we get so carried away because we see this stuff. Like if you're if you're very into lifting, and you see all these videos of people squatting a thousand pounds or whatever, you kind of get jaded to the fact that it's just fucking insane that people are putting a thousand pounds on their back and squatting, even if they have suits on or wraps or whatever. I know Jesus Oliveras does it raw as shit. Like these dudes are freaks, man. It doesn't matter how much gear you're on or whatever. I, I know I'm not saying Jesus is. I'm just saying it doesn't matter. A thousand pounds on your back is insane. So squatting, I'm starting to get a whole new found appreciation for squatting now that I'm trying to do it more often. And uh, I'm, getting, I'm starting to get hyped up for it. And uh, speaking of hype, holy shit, dude. I also got this uh, Psycho Pharma. I got the uh, sampler pack. So I got like five, five packets of samples I got a Psycho Pharma t-shirt and I got this shaker bottle. I've been using this shaker cup for everything. Um, it's fucking legit because it's 28 ounces. It's bigger than my other shaker cups. So it's actually pretty decently sized and it just looks cool with the Psycho Pharma logo. Full disclosure, I mean, I'm a huge Eric Bugenhagen fan. Uh, he really got me into lifting uh, heavy uh, probably about four or five years ago. So 
uh, I'm biased. I will buy Psychopharma till the end. Um, this shit, uh, the the pre workout was great. I mean, I hit I hit a huge deadlift PR, but we'll get to that. But shout out to Psychopharma. This shit is great. Um, that sample pack is like ten bucks right now. If you want to go try it out, uh, I'm not sponsored by them at all. I just I think it's a good I think it's a solid company and Rick Boogs Eric Bugenhagen owns like half of it now so I'm trying to support um, the mindset right so benching I, I hit bench after my squat and I've I've been hearing more and more guys like Pete Rubish and a couple other people say that like low bar squats just destroys your bench because it kills your arms so much your arms and your shoulders are in such a compromised position that when you go to bench after your low bar squat, that your arms actually take quite a bit of the force. I know it's a squat, but your arms holding up that weight on your back like that, your arms actually take a beating. So I felt that quite a bit when I went to bench. Keep in mind, it was like 20 degrees in my fucking garage too. It's freezing cold. The barbell was ice, it's freaking ice. So gripping that barbell sucked. Um, it took a while to get warmed up. I have a little space here in there, but it didn't do much. Anyways, I'll post the entire like kind of like bench workout or whatever. I uh, I worked up to 315. 315 flew, felt very easy, which is good, you know. Um, I, my best has been 405, but man, I'm so more and more that I do comp bench. The more and more I realize that. That 405 with my ass off the bench and the bounce and the elbow wraps, that doesn't mean shit. That doesn't mean jack shit. The more I do the comp bench, the more I realize that I'm just weak at bench. And that was total ego benching. And I knew it was ego benching back then, but I, I don't even like saying that I can bench 405 now that my comp bench is. So long story short, I hit 335 comp bench today or yesterday, whenever, yeah, yesterday when I did this. And uh, I think my ass came up, but the move itself actually felt very easy. Like the 335 felt pretty easy, like a uh, low struggle. And it was with the pause and everything, so I'm happy with that. Um, but I went for 345 twice and just got absolutely folded by it, which really hurt, hurt my emotions. But if you think about, you know, five weeks ago at my competition, I benched 315. And uh, today, I, if I bench 335, that's a 20 pound... 20 pound PR in five weeks, which I will take that any day if I can keep, because it's not about where you're at today, it's about where you're gonna be at in the future. And if this if this programming is working for me to put 20 pounds on in five weeks, like 10 more weeks, where's where's my bench gonna be? Is it gonna be another 20 pounds every five weeks? Is it gonna be 10 pounds, you know? Like, it's gonna be an increase in 10 weeks, and that's what we're here for. We're not here for the instant results, right? We're here for the long term, the long game. If I can keep up with this programming, my shoulders can keep up. I stay injury free and I can keep doing this uh, all year. You know, 52 weeks, 365 day mindset. Shout out Pete Rubish. Um, you know, if I can keep at it, I can bench 405 comp bench by the end of the year, which is the which is the goal, right? And that might be ambitious, but fuck it, you know, ambitious kind of guy. So. That's my uh, that's my bench press, and I know this is the road to 700 pound deadlifts. So here we go with the deadlifts. Um, you know the squat and the bench. You know those are whatever to me. I I do think the more my squat goes up, the more my deadlift goes up. I'm starting to see that correlation, as noted previous in previous videos. Um, you know, I, for a long time I was never the squat guy. I was just deadlift only, and that's all you need to do to build a big deadlift. Uh, I think I was sorely mistaken. I mean, I think you can build a big deadlift with just doing deadlift, but you're leaving gains on the table by not squatting. I wish that I've been squatting for the last year because who knows where my deadlift would be now, you know, but that's not the point. The point is now I'm squatting, I'm deadlifting. I do it both in the same day. That way there's no fucking, there's no issue about oh my back is sore from squatting i can't deadlift today nope i'm just gonna squat and then i'm gonna deadlift and then i'm gonna squat and then i'm gonna rdl and then i'm gonna squat and i'm gonna de de deadlift so do it in the same day that way uh the axial loading you know is limited to you know two days a week and you'll get used to it your body gets used to it just the thing is that i can't go obviously fucking balls to the wall like i was on deadlifts like all the time but that's probably better for me as well because now 
I can work on my rep work, you know, I can fucking, and I'll still go heavy, you know, higher percentages, you know, up to like 85%, um, which is somewhere in the 500 pounds, you know, so I'll still go heavy, but for reps and chase the reps and go hard on, on RDLs and go hard on Bulgarians and back extensions, all the good shit, right? All the good accessories. And, you know, it's, it's crazy because, you know, the harder you go on your accessories, the more your deadlift blows up. So long story short, I hit 635, no straps. It was a little hitched, but you know what? That's massive progress from the last time I hit 635. And I, I call this a PR because of uh, the no straps, which I honestly feel stronger without straps. I feel stronger mixed grip than I do with straps. But that being said, I, I just feel like I can brace harder and get tighter when I'm going mixed grip. Um, and I can just, like, it's not a grip and rip, but it's kind of a grip and rip. And that's what I, that's kind of what I do with the mixed grip. So I just reach down and fucking grab the barbell. 635, I got it above my knees and then hitched, which before I got right to my knees and hitched, and, that was, and like before it was like a straight up strong man hitch ugly as hell this one still ugly you know but uh i'm i'm a lot happier with the way that this moved than the last one and i can just i can just tell that i'm making progress when 585 flies the way that it flew um i mean i think i could probably do 585 for like three reps right now and uh i think once i once i start to hit you know five six reps with 585 i think that's where i'll be closer to the 700 mark or at least 675 so the thing is uh there's a there's nationals coming up in june i'm qualified for it so the total that i just hit was 1485 um gym total right doesn't count but it's a it's a marker it's a gauge of where i'm at so 1485 was my my gym total if i can keep training up, up until the summer and get over a 1500 uh total i might just go to vegas and do nationals um just to get that 1500 total because otherwise i mean I, I could do it in march i believe but it's in uh it's in a small town in my state and it's gonna be just whack travel and i don't know i i may do it then too but right now i'm kind of thinking i should just wait and do it in uh uspa nationals and uh in wraps and there's there's another powerlifting america which does uh it's like sleeves only and they use stiff bars for deadlifts no deadlift bars um the one that what's enticing about that is that it's 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 all natural which i like you know i like that it's a completely drug tested um federation but i don't know what it is with these ipf federations they don't use they use the same bar for everything and i don't know why i don't know what it is against deadlift bars where they can't change the rules to use deadlift bars but that's that's just what it is i don't know and i haven't deadlifted with a stiff bar and i don't know how long so who knows um who knows where where my stiff bar deadlift is at I would assume it's pretty damn close. Like, I'm sure I could pull at least six on it, but I don't know. Hell if I know. Uh, if not, I'm definitely going to do a Powerlifting America meet with sleeves and uh, stiff bar come September. But right now, I'm eyeing either March or June for uh, competition-wise. Um, but I do want that 1,500 total in comp this year. Um, and then by the end of the year, I'm hoping for that 1700 total with the 700 pound deadlifts. Uh, that's the, that's the biggest goal. And like I said, if I pull 700 with straps, if I pull it with a hitch, that's 700 pounds to me. I'm fucking, that's a 700 pound deadlift to me. Um, you know, obviously after that, the goal would be to get it in competition and yada, yada, all that kind of stuff. But the road to 700 is about picking up 700 pounds and that's, uh, that's what I'm here for. That's what's setting me on fire this year. And that's that's what keeps me hungry for more shit this year, you know? Keeps me going. So six, four, seven. That's what I'm going for. 1,700 total. Which, I mean, completely natural, drug tested. Like, I think that's a fucking, that's a great total. But some of these guys that I see totaling 2,000 in my weight classes, <laughs> like Ashton Ruska and stuff, I'm like, what the hell, man? How are you doing that? So it's really, I, I got, I... I'm 29 years old. I only got a couple years left, I feel like, you know, and I have to go hard as hell 
these next couple of years to really get this shit going. So uh, stay tuned, 700 pound deadlift definitely coming soon. I feel it in my bones. I know I'm still, you know, I'm still uh, 65 pounds away, but you know, inching closer every day, the journey is what it's all about. It's not about the destination. It's about how you're getting there. It's about putting in the damn work, staying passionate, staying injury free, and uh, just getting after it, man. Getting after it with intensity, going fucking hard, and being motivated, man. That's that's what lifting is about. It doesn't matter what the weight you're lifting. It's just what matters is that you keep showing up and you keep fucking getting after it. And over time, the numbers will come. The numbers will come over time. You just have to keep at it. Keep consistency. Like, nothing can slow you down if you don't get injured. The only thing that will slow you down, aside from your mindset, is injury. And so, if I can stay injury-free, keep my mindset strong, chasing the next fucking goal, year after year, month after month, day after day, week after week, I mean, come on. There's nothing that can stop you. So, here we go, guys. Week five in the books. Um... This has been episode five. We're gonna restart the whole program, which I'll I'll post up again on the screen. I might make some adjustments um, to my bench, but haven't completely decided yet. Um, I'm, the only thing that I would consider is maybe adding some, uh, what is it, cambered bar bench for a bigger range of motion since I'm kind of weak off of the chest. That's what I'm considering right now. If not that, then I'm gonna start doing pin presses, dead bench, but, Anyways, guys, logging off now. Later.